Hello and welcome to the physics topic energy lesson three heat transfer. We've already looked at energy stores and energy transfers so today we're going to specifically look at heat transfer. I want you to take a look at these images here and what do they all have in common? Have a think about what we've been learning about already and what you know each thing is used for. So you've got a radiator, a pan cooking an egg, a Bunsen burner, a fire and a cooker. All of them are involved in heat transfer, whether it be to cook or warm an object or room or surroundings. Now, you need to understand how that happens in some cases. One of the ways this happens is through conduction. Now, when an object is heated, the particles begin to vibrate as they're gaining energy in their kinetic energy store. Here, these three lines, these little lines here, um, represent energy. They're showing that those particles have more energy. Now the two objects must be touching and as the vibrating particles touch they will pass the energy on to the closest particles near them. That means that the heat energy is transferred through the object. So the particles in the hotter object vibrate faster than the other particles, so when they touch the energy is transferred. So if you take a look here, you've got three different colours to represent this and the orange circles are representing the particles that have gained some energy from the hotter particles on the left hand side and they are vibrating more than the blue particles. Then the next stage that takes place is that the whole object has become hot through conduction because the heat energy has been transferred. The other process you need to know about is radiation. So what happens with radiation waves? No particles are involved. So when a hot object is releasing energy to its surroundings, it can do this by radiation. The waves carry heat energy to the surroundings or a nearby object. Again, they don't need to be touching. The heat energy can be absorbed by the nearby cooler object. We often heat our houses like this. The hotter object radiates more heat than the cooler object. So the cooler object absorbs the radiation and begins to warm up. As this happens, the hotter object also will begin to cool down. Right. Now you've talked about the heating, we've also got to think of a way um, of protecting ourselves and how sometimes we could retain that heating or um, not burn ourselves. Now all of these objects have something in common linked to this. So you've got a saucepan with um, a different material used to make the lid and the handle. You've got a plug with the insulation on around the wires. You've got an oven glove, a coffee cup and a flask. Have a little think about what they might all have in common. All of them are insulators. So they all insulate. So the saucepan handle um, doesn't conduct the heat, which means it stays cool, so we can touch it easily when we're removing it from the hob. The wires in the plug um, have an insulator, which means electricity doesn't pass through into someone touching those wires. The oven glove means you can pick metal up that may conduct heat, but the oven glove doesn't. The coffee cup will be of an insulating material to make sure the heat stays in for as long as possible. And the same with the flask. Now, you need to understand how the insulate, insulation works. We've got two different types of coffee cup here. We're going to specifically look at the example of the takeaway coffee cup. Whether it be for coffee, for tea, for hot chocolate, the principle will be the same. So materials that are made of a conducting material, um, like the metal saucepan, transfer heat energy quickly. Materials made of the insulating material, such as cardboard maybe, will transfer heat slower. So the heat energy loss is slower. That means that the object retains the heat for longer and an insulator will help keep that hot chocolate hot. So if we take a look at this coffee cup and we can see how the insulation works. So you've got here the coffee cup with a cardboard insulator. 
then what you've also got is the fact that the cardboard insulation will slow the heat energy transfer down. This means that our coffee um, will remain hotter for longer and that the hand, importantly, the hand will remain cooler so that we can walk about with our coffee cup. Um, we could go for a walk with our coffee cup, for example, our coffee will stay warm, our hand will not get burnt. You need to be able to recognise everyday examples of insulation. So we've talked about the coffee cup, um, we've talked about the flask, obviously you've got insulating wires on each individual wire and then again around the wire, so double layered insulation on that. And then the food spatula here, you've got a metal spatula and then the orange part on the end is plastic. Again, it will not conduct the heat, so it will insulate it, which means we will be protected from it. Some other everyday examples that you need to be aware of. For conduction, think about the bar of chocolate. If you're holding it in your hand, it will melt on a warmer day. Ironing clothes, conduction, that heat energy is transferred from the iron to the clothes. And in the process, we'll also um, smooth out any of those creases. Picture that's not on there. Metal spoon um, that can be used to stir sugar in tea that will transfer heat, the spoon will warm up. Um, ice will cool down in your hand by conduction. And then some examples of radiation. So you've got two images there. Uh, the heat from a fire will radiate and warm a room and the heat from the radiator will also radiate and warm a room. Another couple of examples would be um, the sun warming your face on a hot summer's day and also heat from a light bulb that you might experience getting warm.